So it's a common idea to use acids to dissolve many minerals or insoluble salts. And I want to take a second to show exactly why does that happen? Why do acids um, dissolve a lot of minerals? So this is a common idea used um, when you're trying to do an extraction. You uh, want to get a specific metal out of an insoluble salt or a rock. A lot of the times they tend to dump it into an acidic solution and that, that causes the insoluble salt to dissolve and it frees up the uh, cation for the, the, the metal. And so I want to take a second and, and look at why is that? Why do acids tend to dissolve uh, minerals or insoluble salts? And that's because many of the uh, counter ions for uh, metals are in, um, bases themselves. So like hydroxide or like sulfide S2- minus or uh, carbonate CO3 2 minus and those are going to be in equilibrium with our acid and so we can use the acid to affect the concentrations of our counter ions or our um, uh, anions and then that's going to cause our equilibriums to shift to cause our insoluble salts to disassociate. So that's a little bit much but let's look at magnesium hydroxide and look at the equilibrium that occurs when we start adding an acid to it. So magnesium hydroxide uh, insoluble salt, we have a KSP here and that disassociates to make magne magnesium 2 plus and two hydroxides. And the idea is it's an insoluble salt and I want it to say get it to dissolve in an aqueous solution and what I'm going to do is add acid to it. So why does adding an acid cause this equilibrium to shift to the right? So we got to remember that although this equilibrium is occurring because we have hydroxide, hydroxide is also in equilibrium with our KW expression. So our self-ionization of water, which is right here. So we know um, that this equilibrium is equal to KW. So let's look at overall what happens to the equilibrium when we start dumping in acid to it. So we're going to do a little manipulation here and we're going to combine these two reactions. So if I take my KW reaction and multiply by two, I get this. And then if I reverse it, I divide, uh, remember when you reverse a reaction, it's one over the initial uh, K value. So going from here to here, if I find the new K value for this reaction, I take the inverse of KW and square it. So for this reaction, the K value is 1.0 times 10 to the 28. So this is a very large number. So my um, KSP is a small number, but this number here, so when we reverse it and we say, okay, we're dumping acid into our solutions, it's a very large number. And the idea is we're going to combine these two pieces. So this reaction and this reaction, we're going to combine them and say what's going to be the new K value, which side does our equilibrium lie. So when I add these two reactions together, so I add this one and this one, I get this reaction. And remember that the K value when you're adding two different reactions, if you have reaction A and reaction B and you add them together, the new K value is going to be um, the product of the K value for reaction A and reaction B. So here the first reaction is our KSP value, so we got that one. The second um, K value is for this theoretical reaction that we kind of created so that we can add these two reactions together. We make this new reaction, uh, the, the, the K value for this new reaction is KSP times our new K value here. When we multiply together we get 1.8 times 10 to the 17th very large K value which means this equilibrium lies very far to the right. So when I take my insoluble salt, magnesium hydroxide, and I start adding acid to it, <clears throat> it causes the equilibrium to shift to the right. So this is a very powerful reaction. As we're adding in hydronium, it causes our insoluble salt to disassociate into its corresponding cation and water in this case. So dumping in um, acid with a lot of different minerals will cause it to become uh, freed up or cause our uh, metal become freed up and become an, an aqueous solution and then we're going to see later on you can uh, get these things to precipitate out.